Hey folks, uh, my apologies if you can hear a little bit of background noise. Uh, the air conditioner is on full blast right now. It is 115 degrees here in Palm Springs. I just tried to do a take of this class without the air conditioner running and it didn't go well. So we're doing it again with the air conditioner. So my apologies if you can hear that. Just use not as good headphones for this one. Hey folks, and welcome to the seventh chapter in my 12 part series on video production for small business owners and nonprofits. You are watching the free version of this course available on YouTube, but if you would like to access the entire course, which includes project files, demo footage, library templates, PDF guides, and a lot more, you can sign up at the address below, or I'll post a link in the video description. Without any further ado, let's begin the class. Hi everyone, and welcome to chapter seven. Today we are discussing audio basics for Final Cut Pro, including how to record a voiceover, then we'll go over audio ducking and how to make audio fade in and out. I'm gonna show you a few helpful audio tools that are built right into Final Cut Pro. And finally, we'll talk about how you can get music that you can legally use in the background in order to avoid a very messy copyright strike against your account. And trust me, you don't wanna go through that. One of the challenges a lot of people experience when filming at a place of business is it can be really difficult to try to control background audio. I experienced this firsthand when I was trying to film at Chiquessa Chocolate. We had credit card machines that were beeping in the background, phones ringing, customers coming and going, espresso machines. And while we got some really great footage, I didn't feel the audio quality was where I'd hoped it would be. At this point, I realized that this was a really wonderful teachable moment because frankly, many of you may find yourselves in a similar situation at some point in time. Rather than wasting a lot of time trying to isolate every little blip and noise in the background, sometimes it's just easier to go with a voiceover. So a few weeks ago, I asked Katie to write a simple 30 second script that hit on the main talking points. We met at a quiet location and recorded the voiceover. Now, those of you who are following along on Thinkific can now access that file as a download. We did two takes. Personally, I thought take two was a little bit better and I would like to play it for you because later on, we're gonna incorporate music and you're gonna see how this thing is gonna to start to come together. Let's take a listen. We are Chiquessa Chocolate, a bean to bar chocolate company located on Cape Cod at 8 Highland Road in North Truro, Massachusetts. We handcraft our chocolate in small batches from fine flavor direct trade cacao. We serve a full menu of delicious coffee and chocolate drinks and an ever changing selection of chocolate confections. To add a voiceover to your project, if you want to use a shortcut, you can use Command Option 8, or if that's a little too hard to remember, you can just go here into the menu bar, click on Window, and then select Record Voiceover. The goal is to get our levels to average around minus six decibels. And keep in mind, if you need to adjust the gain later on, you're better off having to bring those levels up rather than bring them down. You don't have to, but if you'd like, you can name your voiceover track here. Where it says input, you'll need to select your microphone. I usually leave the monitor turned off and I would recommend that you do the same. The file we are about to create does need to live somewhere. So if you don't already have an event for your voiceovers, you can do that by going to file, new event. Now just place the playhead where you want your recording to start. And when you press the red button, Final Cut Pro will rewind three seconds and give you a countdown before it starts recording. When you're done, click the stop button. If you need to adjust the timing of your voiceover, you can drag it wherever you need. There are a few different ways that you can adjust the volume of a track. I'm gonna show you two of those methods now and one I'm saving for the end of this class. To adjust the volume for the entire track, click on it so that it's highlighted, then go into the inspector, click on the audio inspector, then click into this field and drag up or down on your cursor. Ducking is a process where you can temporarily lower the volume for a specific portion of a clip. To do this, you can use the range tool, which you can access by tapping the R key on your keyboard. Now just click and drag to select the portion of the clip you want to duck and then drag this line down in order to lower the volume. Just to point out, one of the things I love about this method of ducking is that Final Cut Pro automatically creates the transition so that it fades down at the beginning and then up at the end. 
Ducking is also really great if you're ever recording and there's a loud noise in the background like a car horn. You can just use that range tool, select it, and then bring those levels down. I'm gonna need to zoom way into the screen for this one. To fade your audio in, look for this tiny dot at the very left of the clip down below in the section where you can see the wavelengths. Then drag this dot to the right in order to create an audio fade in. To create an audio fade out, just go to the end of the clip and do the same thing. Look for that tiny little dot and then drag it to the left. Just in case some of you don't see the waveforms appear at the bottom part of the clip, I want to show you where that setting lives. It's right here in the center of the screen towards the right and you want to look for this film strip icon. These options will change what information you see on the timeline. So for example, this option will show you more of the clip and less of the waveform. To increase the physical size of the clip, just use this slider right here. Sometimes when you are editing, you may want to temporarily hide a shot. This process is known as disabling a clip. To do it, all you need to do is make sure that your clip is highlighted and then tap the letter V on your keyboard. So for example, if I place this shot over these other clips, normally when I play it back, you would see that shot because it's the top layer. But if I disable that clip by tapping the letter V, now I can see the shots beneath it. This technique also works with audio. So for example, if I'm trying to refine Katie's voiceover, I might want to temporarily disable the song so that I can focus on her track. To mute a clip, you can simply grab this thin line and drag down. At this point, let's go through a few of the different audio tools that are built into Final Cut Pro. If we were to truly dive into all of the different audio tools that are built into Final Cut Pro, we would be here literally all day long. So I am just gonna focus on the tools that I think you guys need to know the most. The first tool is one that if you've been following along this entire time is already automatically making your audio sound better than the original. If you miss that part, just to review, go into preferences, then go into the import tab and make sure fix audio problems is checked. So if that by itself doesn't make your audio sound better, here's a few other things you can do. The main tool that I use is the limiter. You can find it here in the effects panel under the level category. To apply it, just drag it and drop it onto your clip. To access the controls, go here into the inspector and click on this icon. The limiter is basically a push and pull process. You are bringing up the volume of the lowest parts of the clip without making the loudest parts too loud. I'm gonna use Katie's voiceover here as an example. The two most important settings here in the controller are gain and the output levels. What I would recommend you do is just play with it until you find the right levels. And just as a reminder, we want it in the end to average around minus 12 to minus six decibels. Now there can be moments where it goes a little bit above minus six decibels, but not by too much. So at this point, I'm gonna move the playhead back tap the space bar and adjust the gain as the clip plays. While we are here on this screen, there are a few quick settings that I would recommend that you change. Here where it says mode precision, I recommend that you change it to legacy and turn soft knee on. If you have absolutely no idea what I just said, don't worry, I don't either, but that's what people who are smarter than me told me to say. Hey, at least I'm honest with you guys, right? Three of the other significant audio tools that are built into Final Cut Pro are the compressor, de and channel EQ. Now, wouldn't it be great if there was just a really easy way to apply one effect that contained all three of those tools? You do know where this is going, right? Check this out. Go into the effects browser, then scroll all the way down to the very bottom where it says voice, and then click over here and drag voice over enhancement onto your clip. To access the controls, you guessed it, right here in the inspector. And the first thing you wanna do is pull up the presets. What I recommend you do is just play with these presets and find the one that best works with your voice and then fine tune it from there. If you do wanna dive deeper into compressor, de and channel EQ, you are certainly welcome to explore. 
As I've said the whole time, I am making this course for small business owners and I do not want to overwhelm people. So please keep in mind, you are making a commercial, not the next Star Wars movie. At this point, I would like to talk a little bit about music. And we're gonna start by going over a few of your options as far as where you can get music. Then I want to play for you the song that I've selected for the commercial for Chiquessa Chocolate. And finally, I want to show you a few creative types of edits that I made in order to make this song fit our timeline. When it comes to licensing music that you can legally use in your commercial, you have several options. There are some minimal resources for free music, including Creative Commons, which I wanted to give a shout out to. But the problem with many of those sources is that they have conditions where you can only use their music if it's for something like a student project, and hence not a great fit for this audience. Another option is you can license an individual song for a one-time use. There's a lot of different websites where you can do that. For a lot more money, you can license a song for unlimited use. And the last option is to sign up for a subscription to one of the various music licensing services that gives you access to an expansive library of content that you can use as long as that subscription is active. The service that I personally use and the one that I recommend for this audience is epidemicsound.com. They have personal and commercial plans. If you are looking to ultimately turn your video into an ad that you can run online, in that case, you are looking at the commercial plan. I want to explain why I think this is a great solution for those of you who are taking my course. I have a link in the video description where you can get a free month trial. And as long as you publish your commercial within that month, you are legally covered. Now, that being said, I do recommend that you probably go for two months. And the reason why is because that way you have a month to run your commercial, get some feedback, then maybe try changing it out with a different song. And now you can compare your results and see how you do. The important detail I want to make sure you understand is that after you publish your commercial, you do not technically need to keep your subscription. I want to play a few seconds of the song that I selected to pair with the Chiquessa Chocolate commercial. When Katie was walking me through the back and showed me the infamous chocolate waterfall, she said something that stuck in my brain and ultimately led to the music that I selected. All right, for your I Love Lucy moment here. Now, I can't legally use music from I Love Lucy, but one of the things I love about Epidemic Sound is that it's very easy for me to find similar music. So I used the search tool and I was just kind of trying to think of words or phrases that could describe this genre of music. And one of the ones I typed in, I think was Variety Show. And one of the tracks that came up was Lush Meadows by Martin Landstrom. I downloaded that song with one click, and because I'm good about organizing my footage, I saved it into my event for music, and now I'm gonna bring it into my timeline. At some point, I'm going to need to lower the audio where Katie's voiceover comes in, so now I'm gonna show you the third way that you can adjust the volume, which involves using keyframes. Keyframes allows you to create your own transitions. You can use them with video or audio, and in this case, I'm gonna use it to tell Final Cut Pro how long I want it to take to transition my music from the volume at the opening to the volume once Katie starts speaking. To do this, I'll click on the music track so that it's highlighted. Then I'm gonna go here into the inspector, and next to the volume, you should see a little diamond icon. I'm gonna click on it in order to create a new keyframe, and before I change the volume, the next step is I need to tell Final Cut Pro how long it's gonna to take to transition to the new volume. Our project is playing at 30 frames per second, and I think about a third of a second will be good, so that would be 10 frames. Now, there are two ways that I could advance 10 frames. I could tap the right arrow key 10 times, or you can hold the Shift key and tap the right arrow. Now that I've done that, I now need to adjust the volume. So let's go into the inspector and I'm going to bring our levels to around minus 17 decibels. As we get to the end of the piece, we're going to have to get creative in order to shorten things. After all, this song is three minutes long and our commercial is only 41 seconds long. 
In this type of scenario, what I usually try to do is snip off the end part of the song, snip just before the commercial is starting to wrap up, and then create a crossfade so that the first part fades out as we fade in the other clip. And if we do it just right, no one will ever be able to tell the difference. Let's hear how it plays when I blend the two together. At this point, I'm gonna add back in Katie's voiceover, and I want you to hear how it sounds when everything comes together. We are Chiquesset Chocolate, a bean to bar chocolate company located on Cape Cod at 8 Highland Road in North Truro, Massachusetts. We handcraft our chocolate in small batches from fine flavor direct tray cacao. We serve a full menu of delicious coffee and chocolate drinks and an ever-changing selection of chocolate confections. You can even watch the process while you sip and shop. We also feature a craft chocolate library from other craft makers from around the world. Come check us out in store or online at chocolate.com and learn where your chocolate comes from. It's not just a chocolate bar, it's an experience. Thinkific students, your homework is to use the tools that we've discussed in this chapter to improve the audio on Katie's voiceover. When it comes to music, you can use whatever music you want. If you decide that you do want to try out Epidemic Sound, if you like the song that I picked out, I will give you a link to that down below in the video description. Chapter 8 is a bit of a shorter class. We are going to discuss how you can use the stabilization tools in Final Cut Pro, and we're also going to cover a really cool effect known as speed ramping. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Class dismissed.